Hey, what is going on everybody and welcome to the Spider-Punk event campaign video. Why can I never get the right character on the screen when I'm talking about them? But <laughs> and we're going to be discussing the rebel trait for newer players and talk about who you're going to want to take in for this event. Now, if you're a veteran player, uh, you're not probably going to need this advice since you'll likely have a lot of the stronger characters to carry you through this. Uh, but I do want to discuss the options from a free to play lens and possibly farmable characters for those of you who may have missed some of the more important, uh, really powerful unfarmable characters in recent patches uh, to give some other players some alternative options here as well. Uh, in the second half of the video, we'll be going over over some of the math related to campaign events more generally and what you're going to need to do if you want to get a four or five star spider punk completely free to play so without further ado let's get this party started Okay, and just before we do get to the Rebel roster, there are two things that I want to share very quickly before we get onto that. Uh, the first thing is the Rebel Orb. This is the event orb for Spider Punk's campaign. I want to take a little bit of a dive before we check out the roster itself. Sometimes we actually get some decent characters in this, but in other times we get absolute trash. So I want to see uh, which of the two that is for this event here. So just taking a look at some of the characters that are available here, uh, we can see, you know, some of these aren't too bad. Calling Wing is actually still stuck in the arena orb a beast is okay other standouts ghost she is a war store character so if you are needing this if you're a newer player this might help a little bit Iceman is a late farm, but not super important at this point. Uh, Misty Knight is easy to get now. A uh, Moon Dragon. Now, this is a really interesting one because she's still not farmable. I think she may be the only one in this orb that actually is not farmable and hasn't been given a spot. Why? I have no idea. But she's in there. Uh, no <laughs> she is a rebel character, so that's probably why. Uh, Negasonic as well. That's a bit of a later farm. A uh, Capsam. This is a good one here too, and that's probably about it. There's a couple. There, there, it's a decent orb actually, but as far as the best characters in here, outside of obviously Spider Punk, you're probably going to be wanting to get characters like uh, Capsam, maybe Philovel, maybe Moon Dragon, possibly, and um, yeah, <laughs> there's a few. It's not terrible, uh, but it's not by far the best. But anyways, uh, the second thing that I wanted to look at also was just to let people know that I'm pretty sure the orb is still available here for you to purchase. So this is the first time that a campaign event character has had their orb, their their offer orb. This is their main offer orb, but usually it's not available for 675 power cores. Normally you would be you would you would be stuck having to just buy this event orb. Typically this event orb would have been available very early on, but this actually was not uh, here until uh, third sorry Wednesday. Uh, at the store reset time was when this was added into the store so the other ones was available this one was available quite soon actually as soon as the offer was but like I said uh, this normally isn't there and so I think this may have been a mistake and I don't want to assume that this is going to be normal going forward with campaign event characters so for this reason uh, when we do get to the math section when you get into the 100 coring this gets really challenging because I haven't done the math I'll be honest I didn't do a breakdown of whether or not it's actually better to pull a 675 core orb uh, to get six plus you know the jackpot is much higher on these orbs uh, then to core in the 100s and get the event orbs because these are actually better than a standard event orb but whether or not um you know once you go into the 100 coring you're typically spending i think close to around 500 cores just for one event orb but i think that one of these orbs is valued at probably well, more than one event orb i think based on what you could potentially get so i haven't done this breakdown and i apologize for that um i just don't think the reason why i didn't do it is because i don't think this is normal going forward i know this might is particular to this event um i i wouldn't really recommend going too heavily into the 100 coring anyways uh so i wouldn't you know if you're just doing like maybe 200 extra or the like two 100 core refreshes uh, that's one thing but i you know i think if you are are spending 600 cores a day uh, then you might want to consider whether or not this is actually worth it more or not than spending in the 100 core refreshes so keep that in mind as well uh, just more longer term uh, but let's jump on over to the rebel roster where we'll talk about uh, the rest of the characters all right, so as you can see that this is using my baby accounts roster here, not my main account, because obviously I don't need to tell people what to do uh, who's a veteran. They'll just take a lot of these strong characters and just smash it. 
I actually did put some hearts on some characters that I think I want to point out specifically because either they're ongoing right now or they are farmable that you can get early on in terms of characters that you need for the traits. I also want to see that, uh, sorry, I also want to say that this has changed since the last campaign event. So for medium difficulty, you no longer actually need three traded characters for that. Now previously you did, that in order to actually get into the medium difficulty, you needed not only the levels, which I think is level 43, uh, but you also needed three of the campaign trait characters that has been scrapped i had that officially confirmed uh, by the cms for this but for hard mode you still need five characters so that's a hard requirement it unlocks at level 58 i'm pretty sure uh, but you do need uh five rebel characters so some of the ones that i have here listed are characters that i think that uh they are early farmable that you could pick up pretty easily and they should help you i do want to make first mention of scarlet spider because this event is ongoing right now and it's actually fairly easy to unlock him at least for the two star level unfortunately getting for more shards than two stars is a bit tricky for newer players and you know we'll be talking about that in the uh, days and week to come but yeah, Scarlet Spider is probably my first choice that I would give for any new player who is looking to you know fill out their rebel roster in this case here and also depending on whether or not you're able to unlock Ghost Spider via the baby blitz you might want to consider Ghost Spider as well if you can happen to do it uh, you can see here on my account I'm at 59 shards out of 100 I actually pulled a couple orbs uh, from 675 cores but other than that I, I actually might struggle to unlock her because I'm in the veteran blitz so if you're in that position do keep that in mind and of course I know that it's not to start but if you're going through the medium difficulty things like that the spider punk once you do unlock him is probably something you want to you could probably consider using for his own events as well especially if you're using any of the other web warriors whether it's scarlet spider or ghost spider as well in terms of other characters that you might want to use though that are readily available characters like polaris uh, she is very early on farmable and someone that you probably will want to shard farm a little bit anyways uh, she is available in cosmic one i want to say one six without looking it's in the cosmic chapter one section electro is in the blitz store someone that you might want to pick up as an early villain also sinister six member for unlocking shuri and invisible woman a uh, ghost is also a really popular character early on as well uh, both for the villains campaign but also for like things like dark dimension 2 as well and she's a pim tech that you'll need eventually for jubilee she is out of the war store here and file Lavelle is accessible she's a very strong her stats are very high so honestly i think that if you even build file Lavelle up a little bit in hard mode i don't think it'll be too difficult if you're using her uh, she is available for 975 arena credits out of the arena store and she is a infinity watch member who synergizes with like gamora and nebula uh, who are not uh, rebel members but file Lavelle is so you might want to consider that the rest of the characters these are obvious inclusions so if you have any of these do use them because you can tell that even from my baby account i have a lot of these at high level which means they're very good characters uh but they're not farmable so ca ca sorry capsam is farmable farmable at doom 2 6 though which is kind of late in the game you need to be like level 75 plus so i don't find this a very new player option which is why i didn't mention them in these hearts above here as far as new player friendly characters so capsam obviously very awesome character just not very new player friendly uh death pool also not farmable but if you have her unlocked from the previous campaign event then definitely use her a uh, moon dragon is an interesting one she is not farmable if you happen to have her unlocked and you are going for phyla Vell, this is a good duo combo that will probably get you through the campaign because they have good synergy together uh cloak is also a stellar character but again unfarmable so i didn't want to mention this too much here and then jubilee shatter star your shatter star is farmable so if you are going to be using polaris the option of polaris and shatter star is pretty good you can see that there's a lot of like two sort of two or three person synergy characters here you got ghost spider spider punk and scarlet spider you got polaris and shatter star you got phylovel and moon dragon uh, cloak and Deathpool. sorry they're on the same team as well and so that happens a lot there but there's a lot of characters at the bottom as far as new players go i wouldn't really consider a lot of this like basically below the 30k range on my power is probably something you don't need to bother investing in at this time anyway so any of these characters below with the exception of maybe lady deathstrike if you happen to have her and you want to use her otherwise all of these other characters i wouldn't bother even if you have omega red you're not watching this portion of the video anyways so he's just gonna smack people around so these are my best options here any of the characters that i have at a high power but also the ones in the hearts are the ones that i would consider using for the rebel tag for the hard mode difficulty of this event so let's move on to the spreadsheet where we're going to talk about how you're going to get though to that four or five yellow star
All right, everyone. So here we are in the spreadsheet to talk about Spider Punk's campaign event, Rock and Roll, which starts on Friday as Store Reset. Yes, it's the same time as Pocket Dimensions, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, so January 14th to the 29th. It is going to be 15 days, just like all of the other campaign events have been. Uh, so let's talk about how you're going to start. So assuming that you're doing hard mode, and actually all this entire video, unfortunately, is going to be from the perspective of hard mode and the shard accumulations from that. Uh, but you do get get shards for each of the levels that you complete uh, there's nine levels total and you get shards for a first time clear for that now you do get uh, two shards two shards and five shards every three nodes and so you repeat that again it's two two five two two five and you get a total of 27 shards from doing that uh, we know that it's 2,000 fragments per orb just in case anyone was unclear about that one and the total amount of available fragments in the orb per day is as follows so at the first three nodes, you get 500 fragments uh, per 10 clears. Uh, you get uh, 600 from the other three nodes and then 700 from the others. Uh, that gives you a grand total of 5,400 fragments over the course of the entire hard mode. And in order to accomplish this, you need to spend 900 energy in hard mode. So how do you get there? Well, your daily energy generation, for those of you who are unfamiliar, uh, you do get 288 free to play energy. And this comes just from your regular time, your 12 energy times 24 hours, and you get 200. Uh, you get 240 energy from three energy refreshes. This is going to be dependent on your time zone, things like that. Uh, for me, it's 11 a.m., uh, 5, 5 p.m. I think and, and 8 p.m. something like that that's gonna vary for you guys but that was just mine and so you get 240 that way and when you core campaign event energy you actually only get 100 energy not 120 like you do for standard sort of energy that you get so uh, if you do this four times, you can get up to an additional 400 energy, and that gets you a grand total of 928. So for a lot of people, you know, and, and what my main scenario, uh, you know, accommodates for is that you're going to be spending 200 cores daily on this, which is 50 times four. Now, not everyone does this, but that's why I kind of assume that your potential total is 928. I have a different couple of different scenarios depending on what your energy uh, spending is going to be, uh, but that's going to basically get you through all of hard mode with a little bit extra for medium difficulty and we're going to talk about that so scenario one now this is the what I call the best case scenario and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit is it not there we go uh, so you can see it more clearly for the full table this is what I call the best case scenario because this is about your 200 spending daily uh, this is 300 power sorry 3,000 power cores over the 15 days uh, which sounds like a lot but if you save up a little bit you actually get a fair amount uh, including arena and all that you actually get a fair amount of power cores per day anyways so there's a good chance that you should have enough to be able to do this uh, what I would typically recommend is during the period of the campaign events uh, that maybe you may not have enough cores to go around to your standard event energy, sorry, your standard campaign energy as well. So you might have to divert some of that energy into the event campaign if you want to get a high star for Spider Punk. So this first scenario here is with 928 energy like we talked about in the energy accumulation uh, I also added this section in a little while ago which is gold earned daily and over the course of the event if you do this you get a little bit of gold you know for doing the uh, the campaign levels it's not a lot but over the course of the whole event you'll get like an extra 1 million gold for this it's not a lot but hey every little bit helps sometimes in terms of the fragments gained what you're gonna do is uh, you're going to be spending all of this on the hard mode which is the 5400 we talked about and two attempts of medium to nine and that'll give you an additional uh, 160 fragments because you get 80 out of that and that's all of your energy and that'll give you about 5,560 fragments. Now that's a total of 2.78 orbs. You just take that and divide it by 2,000. You get 2.78 times it by 15 days and you get almost 42 orbs. Not quite, but you're pretty close. What that means is if you like cord once or twice in the 100 level, you'll probably get those extra fragments to get that 40 second orb. Now uh, the total amount of shards that you realistically will get is about 5.4 shards per orb now some people have asked me where that number comes from uh, that was uh, a number that's been well accounted for you know since like two years ago when they changed the orbs and how they work for the events and this is your average amount of or shards that you're going to get from these orbs 
I know sometimes it looks bad. Sometimes you can get as low as two uh, shards. Sometimes you can get three or four on the sides, uh, and you don't always get center drops. But over the course of opening this over a big sum of you know orbs, this is roughly what you're going to get. I also want to include the 27 uh, free shards, and apparently I also sometimes forgot that you uh, do get uh, initial boost of uh, fragments here from doing one one through one nine the first time. Now I forget how much that is exactly. I think it's worth at least one orb. So I want to actually add that in here now. So we're going to do this again. Take that to... Can I just do it like this? So that screw up my math. No, that's okay. So I'm going to actually change everything to add 5.4 more shards now i don't know if that's i'll have to go back and look at it because i forgot to do it before we started here and that's my bad uh but you do get like bonus fragments for the first time clear not just the shards but you get bonus fragments as well and i think by the end of all nine of those levels that you do get like like one and a third more orbs so that will equate to a little bit more uh shards so i do want to add that in there Scenario two, uh, this is what I call the middle ground. So this is only if you're spending, maybe you don't have a lot of cores to do this. This is 100 cores daily. So this is two times 50 core refreshes. Uh, this is 200 less energy overall per day. So 728 instead of 928, you're getting about, well, a quarter less of the gold. So 7.6 million, uh, sorry, 760K over the course of the 15 days. Uh, these are the total orbs daily. And over the event, you get about 34 orbs. Now, again, estimating that 5.4 shards per orb, you're getting about 212 shards shards now this is where you're gonna get the four star free to play and i do want to say that up here in the, it's we're about halfway to the five star at the 200 core level now it's you what this means is that you could get less you could get more so there has been times where i have actually spent 200 cores a day and i did manage to get that five star completely free to play but that means that my luck was above average i've also had times where i just barely or just you know just got like maybe around 190 200 shards so it can go either way i would say about 50 shards maybe 50 50, 60 shards in either direction if you have really really bad luck or you have really really good luck that you can still manage to get the five star with the 200 cores it's just a little bit less likely so when it comes to the scenario two this is very likely unless you have really really bad luck uh, that you are going to get the four star free to play at this range here so i do want to mention that and i do want to add the 5.4 to this as well so we're actually closer to 218 shards rather than uh 200 and 12 or 13 or whatever it was here uh, so now scenario three this is what I call the worst case scenario and this is if you're not using any cores at all so this is just your standard energy that you get completely for free uh, this is 528 energy here and again you're only getting about half a million gold instead of a million from the top scenario and the total orbs over the event is about 26 which times by 5.4 is gonna get you around 168 shards but we're gonna add 5.4 anyways and that's gonna give you about 173 you can see that this is shy of four star so what this means is that if you're lucky for scenario three you might get four star but you're realistically likely to be somewhere in the three star range if you have above average luck though you could still get that four star without spending any cores but you're much more likely to get it in scenario two or in definitely scenario one now for those of you diehards out there, I want to talk about Scenario 4 and Scenario 5. Now, Scenario 4 is what I call lots of cores. This is 50 times 4, aka 200 daily, and 100 times 2, so it's actually 400 daily. Now, over the course of the 15 days, this is a total of 6,000 power cores. I forgot to mention this too. Power cores, 15 days, something like that. There we go. Because 400 times 15 is 6,000. So this is 200 more energy spent over the other uh, scenario one, which was kind of the better uh, 50 power core refresh scenarios get a little bit more gold not too much more though starts to scale down have diminishing return you get a total amount of just about 50 orbs over the course of this event doing it this way and your estimated shards is roughly 296 but we're going to add 5.4 because i forgot about the fragments again for all of these scenarios 301 so it's very very close to five star which is 310 but not close enough so what that means is that you're gonna if you have above average luck then you might get there uh, but if you have average luck or below average you're not gonna get there so how you are gonna get to five star though is the final scenario that I have and this is what I call lots more cores. so this is a total of and I don't know why I don't have that bolded there we go let's bold that let's raise the oh let's raise the the sizing of that this is 600 daily cores this is a lot this is 9,000 power cores over 15 days 
I don't normally recommend this. Honestly, the last time I spent a lot of power cores on, uh, like, really heavily on a campaign event was Cersei, and that's because she was part of that Eternals meta and was really, really powerful. I actually went to Scenario 4 for Cersei, and I didn't even get 5-star, which wasn't expected, but yeah, I did go uh, 400 daily with Cersei. I don't typically recommend doing this, but if you do have a lot of power core spare, uh, you basically, at the end of the day, you're going to get close to 57 total orbs over the course of the event, and uh, just like the other ones, multiplied by 5.4, and then plus 5.4 again, because I screwed up uh, here and I want to add a little bit more, uh, you're getting about 342 shards. And now this is 5 star, because 5 star is 310 shards in order to get the 5 star level. So what this does mean is that if you have average... <laughs> or above average luck, then you're going to get it no problem. If you have well below average luck, you can see that there's a wiggle room, wiggle room of about 32 shards here above 310. So if for whatever reason, you know, plus or minus 50 shards, if your luck is well below average, that you may not get 5 star, but in a lot of instances you will. So more likely than not, if you want to spend this much course to get 5 star completely free to play, then you very much will get that in this event. So what I would recommend typically, most people People just go for scenario one and this is why i list it at the top and that's because it's the one that most people do i think is the 200 daily 3000 over the 15 days and you know what you'll, you'll definitely get four star you might get five star if you're lucky and i've definitely had that from time to time uh but i wouldn't you know uh, i wouldn't rely on that if you're trying to get for five star if you really want to push for the five star you're probably looking at scenario four or scenario five which involves 400 or 600 daily core expenditure so that's really going to be up to you how much you really want to have spider punk you know i've had videos on that before so how much you want to do that is entirely up to you i will have this available as well on my discord if you want to take a look at this uh, another time and of course you know all of you know feel free to comment down below let me know what you think about spider punk his event how hard are you gonna go what do you normally do i'd love to know all of that in the comments down below until next time everyone stay safe and healthy and i'll see you all later boylan signing out and good luck on spider punk